Welcome all of you Source Enthusiasts, I'd like to welcome you to my new channel, which will simply be known as All Source Knowledge. The reason why I made this channel is so I can pretty much share all the knowledge that I know about Source. It's something I've been doing for a very long time, and I know a lot of things that some people don't know, and I can actually simplify things that probably were a little bit too complex in the Valve developer wikis. And for my first video, I'm going to be teaching you something about Source Filmmaker. It's actually a technique that I think people will find very interesting and can actually have an unlimited amount of possibilities depending on how you use it. Maybe you've known about this technique or maybe you don't, but I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a model look wet. But not only that, I'm going to be teaching you how to animate that texture onto them. Basically, if your model looks dry, I can make it progressively look wet. It's perfect if you have maybe some water falling onto your model, or maybe it just suddenly rains out of nowhere. It's an amazing time saver, and it's a lot better than actually doing it in post-production or even swapping out models. You want it to look realistic, and no one just instantly becomes wet. So this is actually kind of groundbreaking if you didn't know about it. And don't worry, pretty much anyone can do this. So without further ado, we need to get into Source Filmmaker. As you can see, I already have my Pinkie Pie model here, and yes, maybe you do like ponies, or maybe you don't, but honestly, this works for anyone, and the main reason why I use ponies is because, well, I like ponies, and these are the most oddest models around. If you can do anything with this, then it works pretty much on every other model available. First thing you want to do is actually right-click your model. Now, once you're done doing that, you want to add a material override. Once more, we need to right-click the model, show an element here, and click Model. Then you want to go down to your materials, and we're actually going to be editing the body. Now, I'd like to let you know that this technique can work pretty much on any other material on this model. What you need to keep in mind is that this only applies to vertex lit generic materials, so it can't work on an eye because it's actually using a different system, and I suggest not trying to change the eye to a vertex lit generic because it'll actually break it. So, sadly, you can't make an eye look teary. That's going to be something you actually have to explore on your own. But everything else should work perfectly fine. So now that you know that, we actually have to add a parameter onto this. You want to right-click whatever you're going to be editing, add a tribute, float, and this is where we're actually going to be adding our attributes. The first thing we're actually going to be adding is a fong boost. Now you can technically just use the Pong Boost if you want, but there are other parameters that can actually give you a little bit more detail depending on how much time you want to work on it. For this tutorial, I'm going to keep it simple and only use Fong Boost, but just so everyone has the information, I'm going to be adding other Fongs that you can add on top of the material and play with those if you want. So first thing we actually want to do is make this something noticeable. Pretty much if you make this a really high value, as you can see, it overexposes itself, and even if you make it too low, you'll get this weird shadowing effect. You actually can't see it in the stage map because it's lit in a peculiar way, so I can't really show you that one. But you just want to play with this and find a nice fong type. Now, I'm just going to give her a nice glow here, so I'm thinking possibly an 8 will look nice, you know, it, it gives a little definition, maybe she was working out, sweating or something like that, nothing too overexposed. And, you know, just to move over here, you can see that, yeah, her body is actually looking pretty nice on this setting. So now you have everything set, and you want this actually to be animating, and you're probably going to kick yourself when you realize how easy it is. All you need to do is, once you're done adding all of your settings to exactly how you want to look, and I just want to stress this, you want to make sure it's exactly the way you want it to look. You, you're looking at this and you're like, this is exactly how I want her to look when she becomes wet. So I'm going to leave it right there. Now once you have it all perfect, you want to right click the body, go right here to create animation set for elements. And this is where you can actually set the minimum and maximum exposure on the ranges. So, believe it or not, it was actually that easy. You just need to press OK. Go to your animation set editor. And here we go. This is our little uh, thing we can animate. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain this part to you guys. This is, uh, it's on par with facial flexes. And as you can see, it's actually animating. And I'm just going to do this real quick just to show you, you know, press the M key here, and uh, turn this all the way up, and then turn it all the way down. Let's play this. 
Look at that. That was just amazing. I told you, anyone can do it, and I bet you that more professional people that play with this can probably even evolutionize it. Just imagine all the different types of techniques you can use with this, with changing the materials out or something like that. Now, uh, there is one quick warning I'm going to throw out there for more of the professional <laughs> animators. Uh, if you are using the show scene hierarchy, you need to uncheck that. This does not work while that is on. I'll show you exactly why. Once you click it on, there technically is uh, no more animation set for that. It doesn't know where to put it because it's actually part of the model. And even if you look in the model, you will never find it. It's in its own little, I guess, you know, twilight zone. So uh, make sure just to untick that and you will see it right there. I hope you guys learned something new out of this video, and if you appreciate the knowledge that I'm actually giving you, please thumb up, comment, subscribe, and even share this video so it can spread around the Source Soul Maker community. And if you want to know anything else about Source Soul Maker, or even modeling or map making, I'm pretty much going to be posting as many videos as I possibly can when I get the free time. So all I can say is thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you guys in the next video.